All right, guys, welcome to Watches with Oliver. Uh, this is episode five now, I believe. And we've got a guest uh, star um, on the show. Um, his name is Mike. I've talked about him before, but now he is here uh, in person uh, from Florida. And uh, he is going to just chat a little bit with um, Bolova and the Jetstar lineup and like basically get to know him a little bit more. Um, his handler on Instagram is 120 clicks, if you guys don't know already. Um, I personally met him through his refinishing process of a radial brushing that he did on a watch, and I, I don't know what watch that was. Um, but I remember just sending him a message because I thought he did great work, and I had a watch that that needed that brushing, but I just don't have that skill set, haven't developed it, haven't really bothered to, because um, I can only imagine there's some fine work that needs to be involved in it. Um, so I reached out to him, and then um, I think, I don't know, that must have been like in 2020, I guess. And then ever since, um, um, I met Joe from him, and then we've just uh, been collaborating, talking about watches. Um, you know, he's in the Bolivar, Space. I'm in the Caravel space, um, but he does have some Caravels too, and um, and I've got some Bolivas, not as many. Actually, I was just telling him that um, the Bolivas I have are all battery powered, so I need to get into mechanical space somehow. Anyways, um, welcome, Mike. Glad to have you here. Uh, so, Oliver, just... thank you for for having me. This is uh, so so. Like you mentioned, so I'm one of the co-hosts of the Spring Bar Podcast, and uh, uh, both Joe and KC have done other shows, other interviews, and I, I was left out in the cold. So now I feel honored to be, uh, and, and I think a star is is being very generous, but uh, <laughs> I appreciate you having me nonetheless. Well, and I if, if I can point out real quick. Yeah, yeah. You said this is episode five for you? I think so. So funny story we are just getting ready to release our episode 50 wow so you add a zero on to this one and then you get the the 50th episode of the spring bar so wow five to yeah 50. that's yeah that's amazing um so i've got 45 to go you got you, you got a little bit 50 but you're you're so you do these videos what every week yeah once once every week so uh, You'll yep. catch up pretty quick then, so because we're we're biweekly, so it's taken us almost two years to get to this point. So you'll you'll catch okay. up in no time. Okay. Yeah. Well, once a week on the weekend. That's what what I'm planning uh, to. Um, thanks to uh, Joe and Mike. I mean, they featured me on their uh, podcast um, talking about transistorized watches, right? Yeah, yeah. And that was, gosh, it seems like forever ago. I can't even tell you what what episode number that was that you had you on. So. But it was it was a good discussion. We both learned a lot. So you're the the, the transistorized guru. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I try to be. I think a lot of people kind of just forgot about that era. It was a it, it was an era where you just jumped from mechanical to quartz. But then there's this you know in between, and people kind of just like went for it for about a year. Then that was it. They just moved to quartz. So <laughs> and and yeah, that was that was about it. It did not last very long. And in such an old technology now, people are afraid of it. Yes. These days. And, and I think that's why, I don't want to spoil the secret, but you can find them cheap. If you look on eBay, you can get them really inexpensively. And they're great you watches. You could, yeah. You could yeah. get them uh, pretty inexpensively. Um, of course, you're, you're gambling, probably, though, at that, at that point, maybe. <laughs> And and I've learned through you now that there's there's two types of movements. You have the the Japanese made, and you have the the what is it the ESA made movements, the Swiss yeah, movements. Yeah, the Swiss ones, right, right. Which uh, according to you are the more reliable ones, and I've right. I've seen yeah. that because I sent you one that I had, which was a Japanese movement, and you got it running, and it came back, and it ran for maybe about a month, and it hasn't run since. Yeah, but so they are. <laughs> So you, you sent me one out of the, the, the goodness of your heart 
a a Swiss version, and that one has been running nonstop. It's it's perfect. Every month I gotta you know adjust the time, maybe a couple minutes one way or the other. But other than that, it's it's been doing pretty good. So nice, nice. Well, yeah. you'll never be late. That's uh... Uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> you'll you'll never be late. All right, uh, Mike. So yeah, so we want to talk with you, and we want to see how basically what your story is, how you got into like watches in the first place, and how you got into that bull of a, um, you know, bull of a bull of a space of watches. Um, oh, gosh, uh, it's been a little while since I've told this story now. So getting to, into watches in the first place, that goes back. To my childhood, I, I can remember having watches, it, you know, the digital Casios, and and growing up in the '90s, we had those little rubber band guards that went over the crystal so that you mm-hmm. know you were hanging <laughs> on something, and that's that's kind of what I started on was stuff like that. Um, now, fast forward into my 20s, um, my brother is the one that really kind of got me started. He gave me a couple of and it's funny to say, um, he gave me a couple of fake watches. Oh, okay. A, a, a fake Bulgari and a fake Cartier, and, oh. and that's kind of how I got started in the collecting. Those are my first few watches. And I thought, okay, well, you know, I'll wear them. I wasn't really big into it at the time. Yeah. Um, but I always had something on my wrist. And then, you know, a few more years passed, and I started, you know, buying stuff for myself, Fossil watches or Timex watches or whatever. Um, and then probably, oh, how long has it been now? Uh, maybe five years ago or more. It's been a long day. <laughs> I, don't, I can't do the math right now. I started kind of getting into the collecting. Um, I bought my first, what you would call a luxury Swiss watch. Um, uh, got some odds and end pieces here and there. Uh, but really, Bulova started on my 40th birthday. So I bought wow. the Surfboard Quartz reissue as a, a 40th birthday present to myself. And that was the very first Bulova I had ever purchased. Oh, wow. um, been a fan of the brand for many years leading up to that point. Uh, but just didn't know how to get started in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, bought that one because I, I liked um, the, the vintage inspired look to it. It was very retro, but new. Um, and that just kind of got me hooked. Um, shortly after that, I bought my first vintage Accutron. And then after that, I bought my first Devil Diver. And it's just been down the rabbit hole ever since. Um, so really... We're in, in 2023 now, so it's only mm-hmm. been three going on four years that I've been involved heavily in Bulova. So when you when you look at the overall bigger picture, it hasn't really been that long, but man, did we all get into it deep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, your your knowledge is really extensive. You really, you know, grabbed it by the horns. And, and I mean, you know so much about, about Bulova and their... It, well, and, and here's the thing: there's, they're always learning something new. There's always, you know, a vintage model that you're discovering, um, stuff that's popping up for sale. Um, it, just through the Instagram and through the show, people are sending us stuff now, pictures. Hey, can you help identify this? Um, you know, models that we've never seen. I mean, their, their, their back catalog is just so amazing, full of stuff. Um, very fortunate that we have access to a lot of the line books from 50s, 60s, 70s, um, mm-hmm. where we're able to research a lot of these things for people. But those are just the American market line books. That doesn't include anything abroad. Right. anything from the European market or the Japanese market or whatever. I mean, it, it, the Canadian market, um, you know, <laughs> it, Joe and I are famous for those gold plated Canadian, the six, 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 you know, what yeah. we call like the dress devil watches. I mean, th- no information on that kind of stuff. So there's, there's so much that's out there that, you know, combine Joe and myself and, and you on the Caravel side. I mean, we just 
create this wealth of knowledge, but there's stuff that we even get stumped on, you know? So it's know a lot, but always learning about something new that comes up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's great, especially in this, this hobby, you know, all of those histories it's very extensive and uh, mm -hmm. you know not aside from the american markets like you said there's other markets that we really don't know how or why or you know what what happened in those markets you know and and nothing i don't you know think is we don't have a lot of information on those uh you know markets of what was sold there or you know what was marketed in ads you know and on mm -hmm. all that stuff we, we definitely you know don't know that um yeah uh, but yeah. But, you know, you definitely have all the information. So, uh, you know, that's that's awesome to see that in a very small time space that you just quickly, you know, got into it. And, you know, that's cool because, you know, we, we have to start somewhere, right? Regardless if it's a mm -hmm. um, if it's just a basic watch or a, um, a homage watch or, you know, something that's branded to be something else, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, which isn't the real item. But, you know, you started from somewhere and then, you know, uh, you ended up here with, uh, you know, with Bolova. Now you're just, you're just in it pretty deep now. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but it's fun. It's yeah. fun. I, I wouldn't have it in your way. And, and I enjoy the brand. Um, through the show, we have a great relationship with the brand. Um, so they let us in on a few things here and there. Um, you know, one of the things we're talking about today is the Jet Stars. And so... We had um, some input as to, you know, the newer models and, and stuff like that. And they they kind of let us um, announce when they were being released and, and things. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's been it's been a it's been a ride. It's been a fun ride. Um, very appreciative and, and, and humbled to be, you know, a part of the bigger picture and some of this stuff. So, yeah, it's it's every watch guy's dream, right, to be a part mm -hmm. of a brand somehow. So and, mm -hmm. and to be involved with one of the the great american watch brands um even though they're not american owned but they are still based out of new york city as they have been you know from the start so oh yeah it's uh it's a good company to be involved with how uh how old is bolivar now they are getting ready to celebrate their 150th anniversary in uh in 2025 is is 150 years wow so um They've got some stuff in the works. Uh, they're they're at the point now where a lot of these uh, celebratory models that have been hinted over the last year or so that are coming out are now into sample phases and getting into final production pieces and everything. Starting um, in 24 is going to start getting rolled out until you know the big grand finale of of the the actual 150 years. So, wow very excited for for what's coming with uh, a lot of their new stuff that's coming out yeah so, cool. so it seems like they're kind of building up the momentum towards yeah uh, towards exactly that. that's yep. why there's these re specific releases uh, of, of different types of you know model lines that they have because they want to build the build the brand up until uh, that anniversary date yeah yeah 25 wow 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 that is fun so as you know, I like to call you Mr. Jetstar. <laughs> yes. Um, for for good reason. I mean, you've managed uh, to collect uh, six. Are there six uh, Jetstars? There's ten. Ten. Ten of the originals. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So you've managed to collect all of those, and they're all, you know, completely restored and working order in, in immaculate condition. So. First off, what? Why the Jetstar lineup? Why you know? I mean, obviously, like like Joe, right? He has the Devil Diver oceanographers. Um, I'm sure there's other, you know, there's the Art Decor pieces uh, back back mm -hmm. in the 40s and 50s. You know that that uh, Bolivar has. But why the Jetstar specifically? How did you get into that? So the Jetstar line um, is completely encompasses what watch design was from the 1970s you have a little bit of everything across those 10 watches you have gold plated ones you have stainless steel ones you have very colorful dials um, subdued dials you have a couple of dressy pieces in there they come on straps they come on bracelets it's a little bit of everything and 
I, I've said it before, if somebody were to come up and, and ask me that didn't really know anything about watches and said, describe to me what watchmaking was like back in the 1970s, I would direct them to those watches and be like, that's all you need to know. <laughs> that was it. That was watchmaking in the 70s. It was very off the wall thinking. The, the, the color usage was fantastic back then. The way they made the, the chunky, solid markers on the dials, the, the just the, the case designs. It, it, it was the, just such pieces of art. And that's why I was drawn to that particular collection, because it just had a little bit of everything in it. Mm -hmm. um, so funny enough, my very first Jetstar that I bought was the Jetstar D. Um, that real wide, uh, to no shaped case with kind of the, the sector dial a little bit, the way that it was broken up with the markers. Um, when I bought that, I thought it was cool. I didn't know what the Jetstars really were at the time. <laughs> and I, I bought that one. Um, and then stuff just started popping up. You know how when you get involved with something, you start seeing it more often. Uh -huh. um, so just searching through eBay, eBay, it's like, oh, hey, look, here's another one of those Jetstar things. And that's pretty neat. And then you find another one. Oh, look, there, there's another one of those Jetstar things. So then I started doing some research and trying to find out exactly what it was about and what was involved in it. Um, it was probably, I don't know, six months into the journey of collecting them all where I really realized what was involved with it. Um, at which point I probably had two or three at the time. Um, but, you know, our friend Joe is very much into the, the completest mindset of having to get all the versions of everything, which is why he has all those you know, 666 watches. Mm -hmm. And he's really was the motivation behind me collecting the entire set. Mm -hmm. He says, you've already gotten started. You are lucky because there's an end point. With him, <laughs> it, there, there's always different ones that are popping up. And there's stuff, you know, from different markets that come up that he doesn't know about or whatever. And it's like, it's an ongoing thing for him. So he's like, you have an end point. You know what you have to get, so just go out and do it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I did. I, I, I just followed his advice and, and researched them and, and hunt them down. And it was a, an 18 month process, which oh. seems like a little bit, but not when you look at the bigger picture. You know, it, it wasn't all that long of a time span. Um, but it, it did take a lot of research. It, it was a lot of lost eBay auctions and and you know there's a lot of, of you know bad sales stories and that and, and that's a whole another story for another day but it, it was it was a fun journey it, w it was a lot of fun to research to learn to to be able to hunt them down um you know the thrill of the hunt right mm -hmm. that's that's what mm -hmm. it was um and that's that's uh, how i got started on the on the whole jetstar collection um after getting all 10 of them it's kind of like you're coming down from a high at that point because yeah. you're so excited to get the next one and the next one. And then you get to the last one mm -hmm. and then you, you're finding that last one and then you click the, the, the button to buy it and then it arrives and all you have this moment where finally everything has come together. But then you're like, what now? Where do you go from here? Um, so I just started buying and restoring extra pieces and just to kind of be the middleman from a derelict watch that would otherwise be lost in a drawer or thrown away and be able to move it on to somebody who's going to enjoy it again for another 50 years you know i i send them out to be fully serviced i restore the cases um put new straps try to get the straps as, as close to the original as as they had come um and they become nice enjoyable pieces again mm -hmm. and the people that buy them love them because they may not necessarily have the skill to do something like that but i'm just that bridge to bring them into enjoying pieces of of the 70s again so mm -hmm. that's kind of what i do with my time now and that's how i stay as involved as i am with the jet stars still is just 
bringing these back from the dead. Yeah, the um, you know the seventies. We we talked about this before. The seventies really just has just amazing designs that they just thought, hey, why not do this and why not do that and with this color and that color and they just like went for it. You know, there wasn't um, you know it wasn't like a sense of uniformity, right? It was kind mm -hmm. of like, oh, let's explore this or and that and so hence that's why you know like you said the Jetstar lineup has uh, different case shapes different you know dials all, all of these variances um and you know like uh, and they're able to you know create them and, and you know for the enjoyment of people um do you know the story about why it's called jet star or is that is no that i don't I, I wish i wish i did there there's got to be um uh, but i i don't know it's it's one of those things hmm. where the people that were involved are, are long since gone. So your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> so there are 10 uh, watches in that collection, right? Mm -hmm. That uh, you have. So out of all of them, is there one in particular that you like the best or the most out of all of them? If you had to just choose one. That's, that's like asking somebody who their favorite child is, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You, you can't you can't answer that one honestly um i i really don't have a favorite um and i don't have to have a favorite because they're all good and and i am am lucky enough to be able to just pick up and wear whatever one strikes the mood at the moment mm -hmm. i do like the the 72 both the the a and b models so that's what's known as the stars and stripes and then you have the the red and black the the quote unquote the cope version of it if you will mm. uh, but those were were just very neat very bright i love the ufo shaped cases so mm -hmm. i do tend to go to those ones a little bit more um but it's whatever you know uh, strikes the mood really yeah yeah i, I think that's the that's the one of the enjoyable parts about it is that depending on what you're feeling you've got your collection right there you got oh, I, I feel like this one i feel like that one you know you have mm -hmm. that opportunity to choose you know whichever one at any given you know notice because of, of the way you feel and what you're feeling for that day you know yeah exactly. um, yeah is there anything about the jet star lineup that was that you think that was um, revolutionary, quirky, um, different? Um, from the 70s, not so much. Uh, they weren't doing any any revolutionary timekeeping. It was a, a pretty basic, if you will, um, AS-2066 based movement. Mm. Um, they weren't really cutting edge as far as designs go. They were they were very unique designs. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of groundbreaking watchmaking that went into it. As as crazy as it was, if you want to fast forward to now, they have they they just a few months ago, kind of not reissued. The watches because they're not direct reissues but they've revived the jetstar name um here in in the, the united states we got three versions so we've got that stars and stripes version we have what's been called the butterscotch and the Berlot dial mm -hmm. those what's nice about those and what a lot of people are very excited about is they're using the precisionist movements inside of those um and a lot of time, the, the precisionist movement is associated with very large watches. Because when it first came out, that's kind of what it was. It was a very large, you know, near 50 millimeter sized watch. Mm -hmm. These are going into 40 millimeter cases. So not only are you getting that groundbreaking movement, the, the ultra precision of that 262 kilohertz watch, but you're getting it in a smaller package. Mm -hmm. So the the revival of the Jetstar is paving the way for more stuff like this, more usage of that precisionist movement, more usage of it in smaller cases, um, 
I've seen some teasers and it's really cool stuff that they're doing. So I like that bringing back that name not only revives a lot of these older designs, they, they've kind of modernized the, the style of it a little bit and they're, they're using it as a vehicle into the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those um, you know, for the preci- uh, precisionist movement, those are those are fantastic quartz movements, uh, and it's unique. You know, there's no other mm-hmm. manufacturer that's using 262 kilohertz um, quartz crystals, and I am sure you know there's a whole technology, you know, paper on on the type of quartz and all of that stuff. Um, you know, all it just has to be is thermocompensated and you would have an ultimate, you know, timekeeping device on that. But also the price point of precision is, you know, it doesn't, it's not, it's not enroaching like the, the higher end tier. It's bringing high level accuracy to a nice, you know, price point. It, that's exactly it. You're getting that accuracy for a much better price point. Mm-hmm. And, and what's nice about that movement is it's a Miyota movement and a lot of times when these manufacturers make a movement they'll they'll kind of sell it to wherever they can you know right. micro brands use uh, movements that are are put in um, other watches like like the 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 Eta movements are used throughout a lot of different stuff um, mm-hmm. a lot of the Miyota eight and nine thousand series movements are used in micro brands and and citizen watches and boulevards, right? Mm-hmm. But the precisionist is exclusively for boulevard. So you'll never find another brand that uses that precisionist movement. Right. So it, it's just a nice way to draw people into the brand because if you want that accuracy and timekeeping at that great price point, there's there's you know one place to go to and they're mm-hmm. they're putting it in cool stuff now. So mm-hmm. It's it's outside of the 70s. Now is a cool time to be getting involved in Bulova. You know, if you're just getting started or you want to get reintroduced to the company again, you know, to the brand, this, especially with everything that they're going to be doing for that anniversary that's coming up, they're they're doing a lot of real cool stuff. You know, they're they're making it exciting again, mm-hmm. if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it, it definitely is an exciting time. Uh, you know, to be looking at, at Bulova to see what's going to, you know, what's going to come up. I'm sure, you know, you mentioned that they have some exciting things down the pipeline. Um, so, you know, I, I definitely can't wait. I love how the precision, precisionist movement is, is you know, getting smaller. So it, it it's a bit more manageable on the wrist. Um, that was always my thing, right? Because, as you know, I've got small wrists and it's hard to wear these large, you know, pieces um when they're hovering around 44 45 on my wrist but you know 40 41 that's that's as large as i will go on my wrist and that's yeah a, you know, that's a sweet and, spot and for many when i when i came out to california to visit you guys i i had the 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 sample of the new jet star with me and, and you got to try it on so what was your opinion of that how did you like it 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 fit perfectly like it the even the bracelet the the with the leather strap, um, you know, it made it a bit lighter and it made it more comfortable. But even the mm. bracelet is like of high quality. It had, you know, what was it like a maybe a three or four link on, you know, on it. Um, yeah. uh, bracelet, you know. Um, but it was it. It's really cool to have that design in a in with modern technology. That's what I enjoyed about it. Mm. Um, again, you know, it had the sapphire crystal, it had the precisionist movement. And, you know, the precisionist movement has that smooth sweeping second hand. I, I don't know if people are aware of that or, you know, uh, there's only, you know, what, uh, the Grand Psycho that has that. Um, yeah, they have the, you know. the spring drive. Yeah. The, um, short of, you know, the old wall clocks on the school, you know, the school walls in the classroom that went around with that smooth sweep, uh, mm-hmm. the precisionist is... is the next best thing Mm -hmm. and actually it's it's a lot of people call it a smooth sweeping seconds hand but it does tick 16 times per second right right but it's so fast that you get that that Mm -hmm. smooth movement out of it yeah Mm -hmm. there is that uh that jet star that i like but it's not here i guess in the u.s market it's that one with the black dial with the gold markers yeah that one that one is 
I'd so there's I feel like that one there's a total of five new just our models so like i said before in the united states we got the three um and then that black dial one um which i i have came out of the uk mm -hmm. um but it's it's a the, the black sunburst with the gold markers um comes on the same bracelet you know as as the ones that we have here but in the sunlight that black oh does it pop it's a beautiful beautiful dial in in photos it doesn't do it justice and when i saw it for the first time i'm like mm, i don't know about that so yeah it's it's a it's a really cool watch to look at in the sun it it really pops i was pleasantly surprised with it um they uh th th there's also now another one um which i originally saw in the australian market i believe it is a european market as well but it's more of a silver dial silver marker black leather strap kind of version um, that is the only one that I need to complete the modern Just Our uh, collection, uh, it, sort of. So now, <clears throat> it didn't take very long, but there is, is uh, a watch group called Complecto. I don't know if, if your, your viewers are, are familiar with that. They're kind of a watch club, not really a watch club type of thing, um, but they just came out with a collaboration with Bulova using that foreign market watch so it's kind of neat in that they chose something that you weren't able to purchase here in the states mm -hmm. and kind of brought it to the states and they in in a you know limited 100 piece edition um with some orange coloring to it um they they had a few custom straps made for it to go with the watch um but now it, it kind of brought it into the U.S. market. So that mm -hmm. was kind of neat, you know, that they went that route and made that choice. Um, but outside of it, you have to look elsewhere in order to be able to find it. You can find it. They are on eBay. Um, you can bring them in. But yeah, why why uh, we didn't get all of them? Who knows? Okay. But it's, it, again, the thrill of the hunt. You got to you gotta put a little effort into it. <laughs> right. It's not going to be worthwhile if you don't actually try, right? Like exactly exactly yeah now so you just how many of the precisionist jet stars do you have now i have four of the five four of five okay yeah so, that so was the, the the three wow. u.s versions the one that came out of the uk and i need that that silver dial still so so since you have four of the five are there any are you able to tell us if there's any plans to release any other variants of the Jetstar lineup, or is this the five, you know, for the world, uh, this is pretty much it? There hasn't been any talk about it yet. Um, I can't imagine they would stop here. Whether or not they picked another, you know, historical colorway to bring back, or if they decided to do, do something new. You know, that, that remains to be seen. But I, I have to believe that it, with as successful as they've been so far, they can't be done yet. There, there's got to be, you know, something for it in the future. What it, what it is, I don't know, but I, I don't think we're done seeing, you know, some variants for it. Yeah. Yeah, they, they can't stop there, right? We don't want them to stop there. That's the whole. We don't want to stop. Yeah, no, it's it's such a great watch. It really is. Uh, it, the design of it is is fantastic. Like I say, they they kept some of the original um, uh, influences, mm -hmm. uh, but modernized it, you know, to bring it into you know modern times, and and they did a great overall job with it. And it it was kind of funny because. I knew from the very beginning that these watches were being done. Um, it, it was something, you know, that, that I have sat on for, for 18 months, you know, while this whole thing was being developed. Um, and I was kind of nervous as to what they were going to look like because I know all about them. I know all the details. I know the history <laughs> of it. And it's like, how are you going to please a guy that knows everything? Um, but when I got to see it for the first time, I was super impressed, very impressed by what they did with it. So yeah, hats off to them for, for doing a great job with them. And it takes a lot to impress Mike. So that, that says a lot. <laughs> yeah, some say, I guess, yeah. That, that says a lot. You know, so... You, you know, you were fortunate enough to uh, be uh, to, you know, talk with Michael, 
who is uh like the product um uh, his he so, product management of Bolivar and you've had some no, few episodes with him. Michael Benevente is is he is the the managing director of Bolivar uh, USA. So he is uh, kind of the guy in New York. Um he's he's the decision maker he's the guy that you know is is responsible for what you guys see in in the stores and in in the marketplaces and that um he came to the company in 2016 um one of his first projects was the the lunar pilot um when that whole story came about when it sold at the auction for uh what it was was north of a million dollars and that is what kind of gave him the idea to do the archive series watches which started with the lunar pilot and then kind of went from there um so he's he's really ultimately been responsible for you know the the original archive watches and now the mill ships and um the new devil diver variants that are coming out the gmts the jet stars i mean everything that's that's you know that is bulova he's the one that that has his hands in it all so yeah um what's nice is he is extremely down to earth he is a great guy to talk to he's been in the industry for a very very long time through different brands not just Bulova alone um he's worked for a lot of big name brands um so he has all the knowledge and he doesn't mind sharing it he wants to be involved in the the collector space um Mm -hmm. and that's why he comes on to our show he's He's kind of got a, a regular spot with us now. Um, you know, every other month he comes on and he just, he loves to share what's coming up. He loves to share, you know, he's he's not afraid to answer the questions, to to be real about, you know, where the market is at, where it's heading, what's new, what's not, things like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so to have him be part of, of what we're doing, um, you know, where our show is not, very large we're not a scottish watches we're not you know a hodinky um but for them to take a chance on us and to you know come in and spend that much time with us you know the listeners and viewers that we do have love that content and and he sees that as a way to connect on that level with the collectors you know we're we're kind of that outlet for him and and we're mm-hmm. we're super grateful and appreciative to have him you know come and, and talk about stuff with us and you know and things develop out of that um the the new jetstar line you know kind of blossomed out of that relationship you know michael saw what i was doing in the collecting of it and I, I'm very active on Instagram and posting the watches and when I get new stuff and telling the stories and, and that's what caught his eye. Um, we did the Jetstar release episode and you can hear him talking about it. Um, the the Butterscotch watch is really the the muse behind the modern Jetstars. That is what caught his eye. That is what, you know, put the idea in his head and it grew from there. And then, and now we have, you know, the five new models that we do using the new movement. And, and now it's just, like I said before, it's a vehicle into the future, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, the ideas can come from anywhere. They're, they're a large brand, but I love how they think like a, a micro brand when it comes right. to listening to what the people want mm-hmm. it's very very cool of them yeah i mean it, it, nowadays you know especially they're really at least i don't know of any you know large watch manufacturers that are you know um trying to uh, the, you know make connections with their, their customers and ask for feedback you know um, to the level and extent that you're doing with, uh, with him and with Bolova. So that's, you know, trying to like make Bolova great again, right? And that, that's amazing. And it's a great time to be a Bolova, you know, uh, fan, whether you were into the brand before or you're just starting to get back into it um, or, you know, just starting out. You know, I think it's a really great time, especially for what they have been doing for the, you know, the past couple of years and reintroducing their lineups and stuff. Um, you know, with that in mind, you know, what kind of, 
uh, influences did you have on the new Jetstar lineup? Uh, you know, uh, materials, case, uh, design. Did you have any say in it, or how it should look, or colors, or anything like that? No, nothing. Nothing. Is, is, you know, on the design side, um, they they have their designers in house, and and they you know tackled that whole thing. Um, there was conversation of. You know, this is what we want to do. Here's what we're thinking. What do you think of this? Do you, do you, you know, is this a cool idea kind of stuff? I mean, those kind of conversations, um, being, you know, the idea starter for it is, is a very cool honor to have. That is cool. Um, there was talk of you know we want to do this colorway and that colorway and we're kind of on the fence about the third one and whether or not i pushed them in one direction or the other i don't know probably not but the one that i suggested is the one that they went with <laughs> you know so right. who's who's to say really mm -hmm. um but when it came to um my involvement it was very much in kind of the release of the watch um there, you know, there's always um, they they do trade shows, so people will see these ahead of you know actual release online or in retail shops and things like that. And of course, you know, pictures do find their way on the internet. So we weren't the first ones to present the watch to the world. I mean, if you follow a lot of these online bloggers and stuff, you would have seen it before the official release. Um, but we were allowed to officially announce it to the world through our, our show platform um when it came to um, the education of the sales staff within Bulova, um they had me do kind of a brief video uh, kind of like what we're doing now just kind of mm -hmm. the you know my history with the watch brand and the excitement for the new pieces coming out and things like that so i was um part of their you know sales meeting if you will um when so this is the limited edition case when you buy the new stars and straps uh stars and straps stars and stripes version it comes in this box and it has a little booklet in there and when you're thumbing through the pages there's a lot of photos of you know some of the ads and, and some of the older watches and uh -huh. unbeknownst to me uh, they had asked for photos of my collection and a lot of them made it into that booklet so nice you know my involvement is is definitely there with this lineup and it's 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 so cool you know to be a watch guy to be as involved in in this particular line and for them to have involved me in it as much as they did it's 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 a dream come true you know right mm -hmm. every watch guy you know wants to be involved somehow some way um and to be able to be living that now it's 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 very cool it's very yeah. humbling it's very cool yeah 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 and, and you get to reap the rewards of it you know you get to see the, all of that now um you know come into play with uh, with their you know launches of the the new jet stars and all that stuff so and i yeah. bet that was a fun experience it's, it's nice to see people getting excited about it you know about the name again if even if they don't know you know where it evolved from it's nice to see people as excited as they are with the cool colors again and with the designs and and you know on instagram and, and youtube and mm -hmm. it's it's all a buzz again so that's that's really neat to to see yeah yeah no i mean you know again we, we refer back to its design you know nowadays i think a lot of people are, are have that standard design of of ap rolex uh P paddock you know those i mean those are timeless designs right but but modern design though is 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 very safe you know a lot of these modern watch brands try not to deviate from what works mm -hmm. and it makes sense you know from a, a business perspective it, it's all about numbers and sales and things like that and people do like them um but there's not a lot of out of the box thinking anymore these days. Right. And that is why I love, you know, the, the bull of archive series, because it brings back that out of the box thinking from years gone by. Mm -hmm. um, and for the, for the jet stars, not to be an archive series, but just a, a line in the modern collection. It's cool that, 
they still wanted to go back and use, you know, a lot of that inspiration from the 70s and bring right. it forward. Right. Not in a reissue, but in kind of a new direction. You right. know, that's that's some of the out of the box thinking that more companies need to do. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, 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 you know, watch collecting is fun, right? It's a, it's a fun hobby. And there's so many different types of designs and styles, uh, you know, for everyone. And, and Bulova, you know, was, was and is really hitting those points then. And, you know, they're, they're getting back at it now. So it's always fun to see that um, them in that space. And, you know, it's exciting. We're going to see what they're going to be, um, uh, you know, developing and up to their anniversary. So mm -hmm. that definitely is an exciting, uh, you know, time to build up momentum to finally see what they've got in store for all of us. Yeah, yeah. Very excited. Stay tuned, you know, follow them, follow us, because we're we're always, you know, the the information outlet as far as anything Bulova goes, whether people like it or not, <laughs> it seems to be <laughs> where our conversations always head. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it's it's an exciting time to be involved with the with the brand and, and you know if you're looking to get involved, like you said, if you're looking to get involved or you have been and you want to continue your journey or whatever, now's the time to now's the time to do it. And it's not only Bulova, they they have Accutron as well. Mm -hmm. um, That's it. Yeah. The legacy Accutrons, and they have the Space View Accutrons, and Caravel is still around. I know you're the Caravel guy. They <laughs> and are. We've had we've had a lot of conversations about you know <laughs> the fate of modern Caravel, um, <laughs> but if you go to uh, the Bulva website, there is a section in there for Caravel, and mm -hmm. they they do have a, a modern Caravel catalog. They do, uh, yeah. And if you if you look through it, they do have some cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, they do have some throwback retro designs, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like the reissues, you know, that that do have those, uh, you know, those those funky, distinctive '70s designs uh, that Caravel yeah. did have that uh, they they have now in their collection. But um, you know, if you've made it this far, hopefully Caravel can uh, come up with stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we we keep trying to put the bug in their ear. You know, don't <laughs> don't. Don't forget Caravel. <laughs> yeah, don't forget about it. You, you've got at least there. one buyer in Oliver. Oliver buy all the new Caravel stuff. <laughs> Definitely. I do have one modern, you know, Caravel, and I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. lusting after that chronograph court that they've got, also kind of retro too. But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you could find them pretty inexpensive, but uh, yeah, that's yeah, something. they're 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 not expensive at all. They're right around that hundred dollar price point, so very accessible. Um, if I, and, and I, I keep saying this, I, I do want to buy, they have a modern railroad. They do. And it yeah. is, it is railroad approved on the dial still. Yeah. And that's very cool. And, and mm -hmm. I, I keep kind of putting it on the back burner. One of these days I'll pull right. the trigger on it and I'll, I'll buy it. But I think that's, that's a cool throwback to, you know, the seventies as well. Those old railroad approved watches. Yeah. Yeah. And it also has that expansion bracelet. <laughs> it, it, yeah, exactly. It really does. <laughs> Which yeah. is very period specific because you don't see expansion bracelets nowadays. <laughs> not anymore these days. Yeah. No, uh, no not at all. Speaking uh, of caravels, uh, Oliver, what are you wearing? I am wearing a caravel. Of course. Um, it's one of their interesting lineups uh, when at a time they started labeling things Caravel by Bulova uh, during that time period. Um, it's mm -hmm. just a simple 12, 3, 6, 9, um, you know, hander right here. On okay, a, yeah, look this, at that. The strap is from their modern Caravel, um, mm -hmm. but it's just a simple, it just kind of reminds me of one of those tags. Um, but yeah, it just has a, you know, this rotatable bezel right here. And uh, yeah, yeah that, that's nice, very clean, Formula One-esque. Look yes. To it. Yes. Uh, I think this one was what, like nineteen nineties. I know that much. Um, mm -hmm. I forgot what year specifically. But uh, what yeah. what are you uh, what are you risking? So for the occasion, I'm also wearing a Caravel. No I'm way. wearing my, oh. my first generation Caravel World Timer. Ooh. All right. So yeah, this one just nice. came back from service. So I've uh, been without it for a while now, and now it's running great. I can start wearing it and enjoying it again. I really do enjoy this one a lot. Nice. So, nice. Yeah, yeah, I am a Caravel nice. guy too. I have love for Caravel for sure. <laughs> I've got quite a few of them. All right. Well, now there's two of them. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that World Timers, or well, it's specifically called World Rover. 
I think, um, in, in like the ads. But that one, you know, has a has the bezel where it has all the cities. Uh, what I think? Yeah, 20, this like is twenty cities, maybe. <laughs> oh gosh, I'd, I'd have to count them. Yeah, I don't even know the number of them. What's funny about this one is, like I say, this is the first generation of it. They they took a dress watch and put a world timer bezel on it. It's, yeah. it's very much just a plain Jane silver dial, 12-6, the, what they call the matchstick hands, right? Mm-hmm. It, it's, it was your, your cookie cutter dress watch from Caravelle back then, and they just threw a, a world time bezel on it. And mm-hmm. it, it works though, it's, it's really cool. So I know you have the second generation version, which is more sportier, has the 24 hour ring on it, has the kind of a chunkier, beefier look to it more of what you would expect a world timer to be but got to start somewhere and, I start somewhere. yeah there's, they, there's two <laughs> versions of that i'm sure you'll yeah. see them in in future episodes um on here i don't um, know that i spoil an episode for you <laughs> <laughs> no it's all good you got to build up hype for terrible or something uh, there you go yeah but yeah any any last words uh for us mr jetstar i think that name is is very apt for you you know i think um from at least from me and probably from many other people you know thank you for for doing what you do with the jet uh, with the jet star lineup and how you basically helped reintroduce you know it uh, the jet star brand or lineup to the world you know um your wealth of knowledge and you do great work well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, last words, not not really. Um, you know, I'm just going to say support the brand because through your guys' support and purchasing, you know, these products is what allows them to be able to do more stuff. You know, mm-hmm. it, it shows the, the interest in the brand and, and it, it's exciting to them because they want to do more things to bring more excitement. So it's just an ongoing circle of, of, you know, or logical joy. Mm-hmm. Um, so Bulova.com, you can go and find all our stuff there. The Bulova and, and Caravel Accutron has its own website. Um, they're always doing something cool. So if you're not following them on social media already, go ahead and do so. Um, like I say, you can follow myself on Instagram. I believe it should show up. My, my Instagram name will be on the video here. I think, yep. um, so it, I'm always, you know, trying to get the word out there too. So if you like Bulova and Caravel, you're going to get an overload on my, my Instagram page. So <laughs> prepare yourself. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, just get involved with the brand, you know, find something that you like with them and, and get your feet wet if you don't have anything from them. Um, and if you do just, you know, keep supporting them. That's all I can say. That's the best thing you can do. That's awesome words, Mike. Um, definitely appreciate it. You know, again, follow Mike at 120 clicks. Um, he also has his podcast, um, and that is also at the Spring Bar Podcast. I always forget the, the mm-hmm. I just think it's Spring Bar Podcast, but it's yeah. uh, Spring the Bar, Spring Bar, Spring Bar, Bar Pod- Podcast. podcast. Yeah. yeah. Um, for even more episodes of his uh, in regards to any other, you know, watches. Uh, but yeah, he does have some Boulevard related stuff on there. So definitely check him out there. And yes, thanks for watching yes. us here, uh, Mike. Thanks for your time. I really appreciate it, and we'll look. It was it was fun being on here with you, Oliver. Uh, I think we went a little long as time far as your quick. time yeah. frame goes, but <laughs> you know, whenever we get together and, and talk watches, it seems to go real quickly. So real I appreciate quick. you having me on. This has been a lot of fun. Um, we'll we'll do more stuff like this uh, again in the future. I'm sure. Yeah. No, for sure. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Well, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.